Hi, Zizran here with another video for 3.15 Expedition League, and this is going to be an update for Forbidden Right Totems. So I've been playing Forbidden Right Totems uh, a bit more now, and um, one of the main things that I wanted to solve was the defense issues that a lot of people were running into. And the build has an insane amount of tank. So this is my character. And I have like 5k life, 3.4k mana. I think I have like 3.1 or 3.2 unreserved. I'm reserving precision at level 1, vitality at level 20, and clarity at level 20. So I have 3k. So a total of 8.2k raw HP, and I'm only level 87. So let's look at my gear. So I got very lucky and actually identified this pretty early in the league. Uh, while playing my spectral shield throw character, but uh, this is actually something I definitely would want. 70% uh, mana regen, just really, really nice. Being able to get something like this that also has flat mana would be huge. And yeah, obviously the full damage of spells doesn't do anything. A uh, Ironwood Anointed Blue Pearl Amulet with high mana and a crazy amount of mana regen also has some resist, but resist was very easy on this build. My totem shield is fairly basic. I was going to try to farm Imprint Beast and uh, my favorite way to craft would have been to uh, use the blue uh, Imprint, which is a bestiary Cricket Chimeral, uh, which basically creates a save game of uh, an item. So when you've imprinted totems and let's say something trash, right, like thorns or something, uh, when before regaling, you imprint it, you regal. If you hit something really good, like, you know, tier one life, life on block, um, or maybe a really high mana roll, you could keep that. But what I was gonna do was, if I didn't hit anything good, I was going to do a couple of times of reforge more likely, as many times as I had imprints basically, and hope that it miraculously kept plus one max totems. It's generally not a craft I use with uh, rare mods like this, but I was gonna try that with imprints on uh, Soul Cell Fun, because getting a very good shield with plus one totem seems very difficult. That would obviously be a quite a big investment, but just having a plus one totem shield is nice. I really, really, for the end game, would like a plus one totem with uh, life on block. And the only obtainable way to get that would pretty much be to spam. Like, um, I think I have them on. Oh, this is on. I'm dead. Um, but the one that is like keep prefixes, a reforge suffixes, which is uh, from Harvest. Other than that, we have a pretty mediocre curse ring. You can get up to 35% of reduced effect of curses, and you can get that up to 40 or 41 with 20 casters. Uh, so this just does, this is just a Kikau server with life, basically, and some more resist. Um, here we have a ruby ring, which is technically really good. Um, but if this had been tier one curse effect, I actually would have gained three skill points, which is huge. Other than that, it's a very big ring. Obviously, you can see a trend of just a lot of increased mana regen. I have totem placement speed boots with uh, crit chance if you haven't been crit recently. This is just 320% crit, so slightly better than a diamond flask. Um, that was probably going to be my end game boot. For the belt, I was trying to get a, a shaper leather belt with a mana recovery rate. That would be really, really big for this. Next up, I have reduced 50% ailment duration on you. This isn't that insane. It makes me ignite immune for some things, not for the league mechanic, because that has increased duration, which bypasses this. Um, it makes me freeze immune, but I could also have gotten just freeze immunity on uh, boots as a prefix craft. Um, and it doesn't make me shock immune either, because you cannot get 30% um, reduced uh, shock duration. I think you can from implicit on harvest. I was working on that. But either way, getting freeze immunity and stuff early was pretty nice without having to have perfect boots. So I, I took those nodes and got, for the most part, ignite and uh, freeze immunity. My wand, I went for a lot of cast speed, and generally spell damage is really good. Plus one level isn't as good, but crit multi, crit chance, cast speed, and prog speed is huge. Prog speed is insane to the point where, uh, like, Baylor Mage took a projectile speed cluster jewel as the second medium, and uh, that is apparently really strong. So the reason for all this mana region is I've started investing heavily into agnostic. You can see that when I'm casting, I cannot deplete my mana. Even without a mana flask, I have 1.4k mana regen with Arcane Search Up. And uh, I was hoping to get like 2k mana regen. Uh, I would quite like to get 4 or 5k mana. And I was hoping to get 6 or 7k life. 
I don't really need more damage. I think I already have four or six million damage on this build, which is more than enough for all the content in the game. Um, and I really wanted to focus on defense. I was virtually immortal to damage over time, like Ignite, Corrupting Blood, Dots were never going to kill me on this build, um, even with 40 negative Chaos Rest. But what I was very susceptible to was rapid hits or big hits. Uh, and to that event, the next step would be to either get high block, and I also really wanted to blind, so much so that I was very tempted to reserve Flesh and Stone, but I didn't want to like nuke that much of my effective HP. So I didn't end up with blind, that probably wouldn't have saved me from what killed me, my, one of my next steps would have been to replace Soul Mantle, because you don't really need that much damage. And I was going to get a Redeemer chest with a plus one support gems and blind. And then getting a plus 21, like a level 21 spell totem gem, getting that up to 22, uh, does actually make up for some of the damage loss of Soul Mantle, because we do get a large amount of damage from totem life. Right after dying, I died in like a random tier 11 map with two damage mods, wasn't particularly deadly. Um, and the damage mods that I've given the expedition wasn't particularly deadly, but the, uh, small bubbles on the floor, which I did see them, um, but they hit me at the same time as one of the archers sniped me. So I just wasn't prepared for like all the things hitting me at the same time and, and was slightly out of position. Definitely a hard build to survive on play style wise. It's uh, definitely not something I've played and you're a lot more tanky on something like shield spike trolls where you just charge into something, right? Um, and that's generally not a worry. I did try Uber Elder right after dying. That was very easy. And that was at like 87. Obviously, I wouldn't have done Uber Elder until 93. Endgame, dropping the Soul Mantle and then grabbing two nice Vermilion Rings. At the very least, 7k life and 4 or 5k mana. Because I have all the damage I need right now. I don't even need like a large cluster really. Just the medium was fine for me. And I was just going to start picking up more life nodes and uh, block and stuff like that and obviously you get a lot of life by things like vermilion rings and uh, getting more life on my gear very very enjoyable build i would say it is more of a software build uh even though you can get a very tanky especially for bosses it's a build that kind of struggles with um uh, mapping and uh stuff like that because builds right now that don't have dodge and don't have block which is hard to get block on this build very very difficult to map uh, and especially go fast. You do end up, especially on hardcore, playing a little like defensive, like putting them ahead of you and you definitely don't get the same type of clear speed as you can on a lot of other builds. And again, like if you're wondering my current curse immunity, it's 20 from uh, Pantheon, the 33 and 40 from Rings and 20 from Steel Tree. So I could have dropped this if I got another 7%. As far as gem links and stuff like that, my character is Scissor and Totems and you can check out the POV for what gem links I'm using. So I have Forbidden Right, Crit Damage, Faster Casting, Void Manipulation, and Crit Strikes, and Multi-Totem. Some people are using Greater Volley. From all the testing, um, like I'm using the, the Splinter Gem for two additional pros, but from all the testing, like it never overlaps more than five projectiles on a boss anyway. So Greater Volley didn't seem worth, Volley didn't seem worth either. Like I just feel like I have enough projectiles, but I was still going to experiment more with that. As far as multi-totem goes, I feel like especially on hardcore and especially for newer players, that's what I would recommend. The reason for that is if you, uh, some, some players are doing uh, Wither on a multi-totem. I have Wither with increased duration and infused channeling, which uh, you get 10% more damage from that. Uh, and you take 8% less chaos damage as well. And faster casting and divergent Wither, which is two Wither stacks per second. They stack up very quickly. Uh, when I was testing it in PvP, it's like, boom, you're full stack. So very, very quickly. Uh, and obviously I get that infusion. Uh, and especially the reason I don't like recommending multi-totem uh, to new players is they are 100% going to uh, end up very often on bosses with four wither totems. And while clearing, you will have five totems because you're probably not going to do um, five totems and then two wither totems while clearing. So you have less time for clearing, which you know, honestly, isn't a problem on this build. You have more damage than you need. Um, but I, I think it's, I, I am a lot more comfortable with self-casting Wither and having the totems rapidly casting. And for clearing as well, especially on hardcore, I feel like I'd rather have two totems coming down all the time in case one gets stunned. I don't have Spire or Stone. Uh, and also just multi-totems felt better and um, I'd rather have life regen and mana regen. So definitely what I prefer. 
But honestly, uh, it's it's not the end of the world if you play the other way either. Um, if you are min-maxing everything, it should be slightly more damage. But you are not getting the infused channelings. You're missing 10% damage there. It's not a big difference on this build, which one you pick, because the build is an absolute powerhouse. Uh, so whether you go for slightly more defensive, slightly less clunky, whatever you choose, absolute powerhouse. Uh, I am also using Sigil of Power, which is very easy to fill up with this. Uh, and gives enemies in the area deal 18% less damage on max stages. And then I'm self-casting with Assassin's Mark. That's pretty much uh, all on how I was playing the build and the next steps that I was taking it. I can't remake this build because I don't have the cluster jewels. I might remake it later in the league. It was a very, very good build and really wanted it as a boss killer. The hardest thing is surviving mapping and fast mapping. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys are enjoying Expedition League. Thank you so much for watching. Sub if you liked the video, but more importantly, Try to die less than I do.